I'm going to introduce you now to one of the latest authors that has been published through absolutely amazing ebooks. Be sure to check out the website and find some great summer reads. Now, this guy is no stranger to Key West. He's a former editor and writer at the Key West Citizen. He has also written for newspapers, magazines, and websites around the country and has written dozens of short stories. He's going to discuss with us today his first book entitled Maddie's Gone. John, thank you so much for being here with me today. Oh, thank you for having me, Jenna. All right, John, it sounds like writing has always been in your blood. <laughs> well, I, I tell you, I've always uh, enjoyed writing. Writing's a great way to express I've, myself, for me at least, and uh, I started writing when I was a young kid. I think mm -hmm. most writers will tell you that. It's something that came naturally or something that they were curious about naturally. Mm -hmm. When my father would get his uh, dry cleaning, back in those days, you'd get a nice piece of white cardboard that the shirts were packaged in. Mm -hmm. Well, I would take those and then I would make a book cover out of those, you know, color it with crayons and then mm -hmm. take some notebook paper and do an eight page book with a table of contents and name it something and then mm -hmm. present it to him, you know. <laughs> Usually it was a story about the family dog, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Oddly enough. Here you are. <laughs> you have released your first book, which is entitled Maddie's Gone. Now, John, tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind this novel. Well, uh, oddly enough, I could say it's about a dog. My first book is about a dog. Uh, <laughs> and um, the Key West loves its pets. People love their animals, their pets. You know, mm -hmm. you'll see people walking their dogs. Uh, cat, don't walk their cats, but their cats, they, you know, have them. And a friend of mine has uh, gerbils. Another person I know has a, a marmoset. But the point is, is that Whenever an animal goes missing, there's a poster up saying, Fifi's lost, you know, help us find our cat, you know, missing since Wednesday, call this number. In Key West, a Jack Russell Terrier jumped out of the back of a pickup truck and chased a chicken under a house. And the dog's owner jumped out and tried to get the dog to come out from under the house, but the dog never uh, emerged. Mm -hmm. So she put posters up saying, Maddie's gone all over town. And so I, I kept seeing the posters. Uh, and the dog, fortunately, was found alive about, I don't know, two weeks later. It had nothing to drink or eat. It had been trapped in a cistern under the house. So I built the story around this dog being caught in a cistern. How interesting. So this is a true story then, John? The basis of it is the, a true story. Mm -hmm. However, I've um, taken great liberties in adding characters, uh, events, uh, stretched the story out to include people who have uh, kidnapped the dog and are seeking a ransom. Okay. So uh, during this time, the reader is introduced to people who are leading a somewhat desperate lives. Uh, there's a high school uh, senior whose boyfriend is uh, attracted to her little sister, so she considers how to poison him. <laughs> uh, Smart girl. <laughs> <laughs> a shrimp boat captain, an elderly shrimp boat captain, tells of how, his, his, the, how he lost his wife during a uh, shrimping trip to a younger man to teach him the value of, of love and marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, stories like these, these are people in Key West. I think the readers will recognize them. Mm -hmm. and we'll relate to them. Okay, well I like it and I have started reading a little bit of Maddie's Gone and I truly enjoy it so far. And John, I know you would kind of like to share a, a couple paragraphs with our audience this morning. If I may indulge them, I hope of they course. don't mind. <laughs> a big part of the book is uh, Julia, who's Maddie's owner, is trying to find Maddie. Now she doesn't know that he's or she's in a cistern somewhere. So she goes to the cemetery where in Key West you used to be able to walk your dogs anyway, and so here's, here's when she's in the cemetery looking for Maddie. Unlike the rest of downtown Key West, the sky was wide open here, with Paul, tall palm trees dotting the field of graves. The early morning sun lit the thousands of white stones and stone memorials beyond the gates. Julia saw acres of mausoleums, cement-encased graves in tight, undisciplined rows, and obelisks beneath a dome of blue sky. In many places, grass grew through cracks in grave sites, and time had worn headstones and split concrete lids designed to protect the coffins inside the above ground graves. Julia stepped through the gate and followed one lane through the monuments and family plots, reading the markers and investigating the various artwork on the tombs on either side. Here was a baby carved from black granite in dreamy slumber over a tiny concrete lid. 
A few feet away, a jagged crack ran through the foundation of a family's crumbling mausoleum, the dates of death predating World War II. There were a new shiny columbarium, granite edifices containing rows of interred funeral urns, the names of the deceased on bronze plaques. Over there was a large headstone for General Abe Sawyer, born in 1862, died in 1939, and on and on. Tens of thousands of headstones grouped by family. Enriquez, Spoto, Diaz, Robert, Simonton, the people upon whom the city's sunny morning was built. You're a great storyteller, John. Well, thank you. <laughs> you really are. I mean, you, you can, I can tell you can get the reader really capture, capture their full attention. So. Well, thank you. For Key West, it's a great place to write for this very reason. These images are everywhere, these kinds of places, and so I think that's what everyone loves about Key West. Yeah, you are very, very right. Now, John, this is your first book. Are you working on another one already, or are you taking a little breather right now, relaxing, enjoying this first release? Well, actually, I'm, uh, I'm starting, a, I've already started my next book. It's, uh, I've got about six chapters done. Okay. This takes place in Maryland, mm -hmm. and it's in the house that I grew up in. It's mm -hmm. an old farmhouse, and it was haunted. So this is a story of my family, and the haunting, or this, the ghosts, or poultry guys, however you want to call them. Mm -hmm. And um, I fictionalize that, find out the origins of why there are ghosts there. Mm -hmm. And so it's a statement on the times, on the South, on the relationship in rural areas between white and black folks. Mm -hmm. The premise is worked out, the plot is not quite worked out, mm -hmm. but some friends of mine who have grew up with me and are reading it say that it really captures a time in Southern Maryland that they remember. Mm -hmm. Oh, I look forward to reading it, John. You definitely have to bring Thank it you. back on the show and read some of it to us, and hopefully the viewers will be able to pick up their own copy. Now, John, was it hard for you to sit down and get this first book punched out? It took four years. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, you have to keep going back. I kept going back and trying to sharpen it and sharpen it and sharpen it. Um, the first burst of writing uh, was about a year. Then you put it away for a while. And then you pick it up again when you say, you know, I've got to finish that book. Then you reread it and you say, you know what, this isn't as good as it could be or this isn't very good at all. And mm -hmm. so then I would go through and tighten it some more, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's easier to start a book than it is to finish a book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that I'm really grateful for is uh, absolutely amazing e-books. Uh, the book was nearly finished. I couldn't quite get the, the, the last burst of energy. And then Cheryl Rhodes, uh, I got in contact with him, and we, we, we got, and he sat and talked about it, and he said he'd like me to go ahead and finish it. Mm -hmm. So I'm really grateful for that, and also the fact that he was willing to publish a mm -hmm. first work by mm -hmm. someone. So, mm -hmm. uh, and so I spent the last three months after meeting him, tightening it up and uh, coming to the conclusion, and I didn't know how it was going to end. It's a real cliffhanger, if I may say, <laughs> uh, until he, he came along and kind of gave me the uh, push, and I'm real grateful for that, for sure, for doing that. Well, great. Well, hopefully everybody can pick up their copy of Maddie's Gone. John, thank you so much for being on with me this morning. Well, thank and please, you, Jenna. Please come back on when the next book is released, okay? Sure will. Sure will. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in with me today. I hope that you can join me back here tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. and then back at 8.30 a.m. Take care and have a great rest of your day. It'll be okay It'll be okay